Okay, let's look at two examples of functions. So we have a function called f, uh, which has its maps from real numbers to real numbers. Okay, so um, the, 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 the domain and the codomain are kind of like, you can think of these almost as like data types. What type of input are we talking about? It's gonna be a real number input. What type of output are we, are we talking about? Well, it's gonna be a real number output as well. Um, but this function f, let's say that this is defined by the rule f of x equals x squared. Okay, so here we're saying the function and its domain and codomain. Here we're saying the actual sort of writing out the rule that we can use to obtain the outputs from the inputs. So that's f. Now the function g is also a map from the real numbers to the real numbers, but this one is defined by f of x equals x cubed. All right, well, these are familiar functions, right? f of x equals x squared produces this nice parabola, right? And f of x equals x cubed produces, you know, this graph that doesn't really have a name, the x cubed graph, right? Now, um, the, the, the point about, of these two examples here is that this, uh, for the first one here, x squared, the range of this, uh, which would be like what, what you get if you stick all real numbers into the function and take their outputs, the result of that is not the entire codomain. It's just the half, real, half of the real numbers from zero to infinity, like that. So there's these numbers down here, right, that are you know then in the codomain, but they're not in the range. Okay, and you might ask, well, like, why did you say that the real numbers was gonna be the codomain? Well, I mean, why not? You could, I mean, you could say, let's have the real numbers be the codomain, but we're not actually gonna use all of them as outputs. Um, alternatively, we could have redefined this function just using this range as the codomain. We could have done that. That's called a restriction. Uh, if you take the, um, if you take, well, sorry, that's not called a restriction. That's something slightly different, but it's essentially restricting the codomain to be just the, just the range. Um, but that would be technically changing the function to be a different function a little bit. So, um, so yeah, that's the idea here. Now, one rule uh, that you've got to keep in mind here uh, is that the range is always going to be a subset of the codomain. Okay, the codomain has to include all of the possible outputs. You can't have outputs that aren't in the codomain, but you can have elements of the codomain that aren't outputs. <laughs> okay, so um, let's contrast that now with the second example. With x cubed, things are a little different. We have the entire real number line here, and no matter what real number you pick, there's going to be uh, some input that is going to produce that output, right? No matter what real number, whether you pick a positive one or a negative one, you're going to be able to find some real number that's going to give that output, right? So in this case, the range f of r is the entire codomain r. So range actually equals codomain in this case. Okay. So that's, uh, that's uh, I hope, it gives you a better idea of what, what the distinction is between the codomain and the range.